It's amazing how many people unknowingly sabotage themselves when it comes to internal job applications. Sometimes we're asked to help the employees of an organisation which is going through an internal restructure. The employees have to apply for new roles. It's what's often called a spill and fill. And we help them with the cover letter, an updated resume or interview skills practice. Now that's all very well if your organisation provides you with such support, but what should you do if you're left to your own devices? Or what if there is no restructure? You're just applying for another role in your organisation. If you're lucky, you have an astute friend. I can remember years ago when I left my first job, one of my colleagues helped me write a marvellous resume that stripped out industry-specific jargon, sold my transferable skills and worked a treat out in the marketplace. Thanks, Eileen. If you don't have an Eileen in your life, it might help for you to ask yourself how much you like working for your organisation and how much it is worth investing in that. Whether you seek external support or not, at a minimum, go through the whole process very seriously and with rigour. Don't rely on your track record, the fact that your employer knows you, that you have done very well in the role to date, that they know what you're capable of. Pretend that you are an external candidate and do everything properly. Here's five tips to help you out. Tip number one, wear appropriate clothes to the interview. A few years ago, I was asked to sit in on an interview process for a not-for-profit organisation. One of the applicants was internal, a female employee who was looking for a promotion. The role was at the general manager level and she turned up looking neat and tidy in a skirt and plain shirt. The CEO was exasperated and insulted. After the interview, she turned to us on the panel and told us that she had advised the woman to treat the whole process seriously, to dress in a way that was appropriate for the seniority of the role. Coincidence or not, this applicant was not successful. It's not a good idea to alienate your decision maker. Tip number two, sound as though you're still full of wonderful new ideas. Many years ago, I helped a sales manager whose role was made redundant. He had not been successful when applying for his own role in the restructured department and then a couple of years later I was talking to one of the senior executives of the company and he just happened to mention this particular sales manager. The executive said that when the sales manager was asked in his interview what he'd do differently in the role under the new structure, the sales manager said nothing. Needless to say, his manager was less than impressed and he missed out on the role. Tip number three, improve your salary negotiation skills. At yet another interview I attended, an internal applicant was applying for a role that moved her sideways, but at the same salary level. At the end of the interview, she asked whether there was any flexibility with the salary level. After she left the room, the manager immediately ruled her out of the job, stating firmly that clearly the salary on offer was too low for her, that she would not stay in the role, and that it would be a waste of time appointing her. I tried to argue in the candidate's favour, but to no avail, she was not offered the job. Tip number four, make your changes when they matter. I was once chatting with the director of a government department who said to me that she could never promote one of her staff members who was at a senior level because she wore running shoes at work, even when meeting external clients, which the director thought was inappropriate. Now, we could argue that the director could have had a chat to the employee about her office attire, but the point is that she didn't, and the employee missed out on a promotion without ever knowing why. Tip five, take advantage of career support. Not long ago, we provided support to an organisation that was asking their senior managers to apply for new roles. The CEO had identified a young manager, let's call him Steve, for a key strategic planning role. Steve thought that he was a shoe-in for the role and didn't take up the offer of interview skills training. No surprises, he subsequently performed very badly at the interview. The CEO was most unimpressed, but luckily for Steve, allowed him to have another go. This time Steve scraped through and was awarded the role. How much damage he had done in the eyes of the CEO is an unknown, but the real point is that it was totally avoidable. Information and tips on how to manage the mechanics of applying for a role are easily found on the internet these days. It doesn't seem to be enough though. I suspect that we humans often need to talk things through to make sense of these career life skills. So to repeat myself, find an astute friend and run through your proposed plan of attack. Or of course, consult your friendly neighbourhood career consultant. It's our job to help people maximise their opportunities, so please feel free to pick up the phone and give us a call.